I've always been fascinated by the heart. The heart is really the only organ that can precipitate a sudden death. When someone has cancer, for example, they tend to slowly get sicker and sicker and sicker. You have a chance to say goodbye. But with the heart, it's different. The heart is the hardest working organ in the body. It's constantly moving. It beats typically 70 times a minute and 3 billion times in a typical human lifetime. If you culture heart cells in a Petri dish, they will congregate together and start beating spontaneously. So the heart wants to be. It's probably the most metaphorized object in human life. We can take something to heart. We can speak from the heart. One of my favorites is to take heart. In other words, to be brave, have courage. It's not surprising that those kinds of metaphors arose because the heart really is the central organ in the body, not just functionally, but physically. It's the innermost kernel in your body, your soul. The heart provides blood to every organ in the body. So what provides blood to the heart? Well, it's the heart. The heart supplies blood to itself. So, in a sense, the heart is self-sustaining. There is a condition called broken heart syndrome, in which patients who have developed an acute emotional disruption in their lives, typically grief over the loss of a romantic relationship or grief over the death of a loved one, that emotional reaction can actually physically change the heart shape and then cause the heart to weaken. I would say that the broken heart syndrome is kind of the archetype of the link between the metaphorical or emotional heart and the biological heart. So what do you do about it? How do you transcend distress? Pay attention to your relationships. Pay attention to the people you have in your life. These things are a matter of life and death.